welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome back to the channel. Uh, before we jump into God's word, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross uh, for me and for everyone watching and uh, for the whole world and rising again that third day and uh, so that we could have that relationship with you, that opportunity to go to heaven. And uh, Lord, if anybody's watching that never accepted you, I pray that they would do so today. And uh, just ask that you speak through me this hour. Pray that hearts are tender, minds are focused. Remove the devil and his distractions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, open up your Bibles to the book of James, chapter number 1. James, chapter number 1. And before, again before we jump into God's Word, I have a little clip I want to show you. Go ahead and watch that now. Tell me about your, your um, life of faith. How did you become like a Christ follower. Tell me, just tell me a little bit about that. I always believed in God. I just didn't really understand yep. what it was having a relationship yes. with God. Yes. And I have to give a lot of credit to my wife. Um, That's great. Very, very strong in her faith. She was like, you just, just come with me. Yep. And I'm like, babe, I'm telling you, I mean, I walk through those doors, you know, the, the yep. roof's going to start shaking and, you know, and I was like, I, I, I look, I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I'm, I'm good with yeah. God. I believe in, you know, yeah. no, it's Mark. There's so much more to it than that. So I said, okay. I said, I'm, I'm going to go, but if lightning bolts start flying, you know, <laughs> uh -huh. don't, don't, don't blame me, yeah. you know. And, um, and, and, and that, that, that's how it started. She, that was very important to her. Um, that it's I have great, a relationship, yes. you know, with, with, with Christ and, yes. and to really understand what that means. Yes. So once again, God working in his, and you know, in, in, in the yeah. ways that he does put us here at Lake Hills Church. All right. Welcome back. Uh, if you're not familiar with wrestling, that was The Undertaker. And The Undertaker was somebody that I watched as a child and up through my teenage years when I used to watch wrestling. And he wrestled for a long, long time. Now, you know, watching that clip, I don't know if you caught on, but he's one that actually accepted Christ as his personal Savior much later in life. Uh, I think it was maybe 2020, 2021, something like that. It was, it was just within, you know, the past couple of years. Right now, recording this, it's 2023. And so he is a babe in Christ. He is a new Christian. And so and you notice what he said there. He said he's always known about God, right? He's always known that God exists, but there was no personal relationship with him. I think that's important to recognize because there are a lot of people in this world, they know about God, but they don't know God, right? Like, for example, I know about The Undertaker, but I've never met him before in my life. But I know my wife, right, Miss Kathleen. We've met each other, we've talked to each other, we dated each other, we married each other. There is an intimate, personal relationship with me and Miss Kathleen. But with me and The Undertaker, I've never shook his hand, I've never said one word to him. That's the difference in knowing God and knowing about God, right? And so, and that's not even the message I wanted to bring to you here. Um, who, who pointed him to Christ? It was his wife, right? I believe her name was Michelle. And so that's why it's so important, you know, for those of you watching, I'm sure there's probably one or more family members that you have that maybe know God, or excuse me, they know about God, but they don't know God. They don't have that relationship with God, right? You have probably some family members, maybe even some friends. And so this is a, this message today is about you pointing them that direction. Notice she, uh, the, the conversation that they had, she would say, come with me to church. And at first, what did he say? He's like, nope, I don't want to go. I'm good. Everything's fine. I don't want to go. But then she came back 
And I don't know how many times she had to come back to that conversation with him. Just come with me. Just come with me. Just come with me. I don't know. But eventually, what did he do? Eventually, he said yes. And then what happened? He accepted Christ as his personal Savior. So maybe for you, here we go. James chapter number 1, verse number 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And we're going to stop right there. It does continue in the verse, but notice how it describes him. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I were to talk to some of your family members and some of your friends and you're not there, is this something that they would describe about you? Sure, they can say, oh yeah, he's, he's a funny guy or, you know, she's a great young lady to be around and, and, and we have a lot of fun at the mall. They're fun. They're funny. Uh, they're entertaining. There's all these different things. They're so nice. They're so kind. They're so easy to talk to. There's nothing wrong with having those characteristic traits about you. But is this something they would say? Oh, yeah. He's a, ser he's a servant of God. Oh, yeah. I know him. He, he follows Jesus. I know he's a Christian. Oh, yeah. She, she reads her Bible. She, I know she has a relationship with Jesus. She really knows God. Is that something they would say about you? That's important for your family to know about you, even if they are not saved, especially if they are not saved. That's going to help you point them to Christ. Now go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. How do I point my family to Christ? How do I invite them to church? And they say yes. You do need to pray for them about that. But also, look at verse number 11. It says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Notice he says, Follow me, because I follow Christ. That's something that you need to have a conversation with your family. You don't have to word it that way. You don't have to say, Hey, follow me, because I follow Christ. No, no, no. It's that invitation. Hey, listen, man, I, I have a great relationship with Jesus. I want you to have the same Will you please just come to church with me and just just try it? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do they know that you are a new creature? Do they know that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If they don't know that, you should share that with them. Notice it says, a new creature. Right? If they've never heard your testimony before, if they've never heard how you have become a Christian, share that. Say, hey, listen, Mom, Dad, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but you know how I go to church? I'm, I'm actually a Christian. And they may say, what does that mean? And then you get to share your testimony of how you accepted Christ, just like the undertaker just shared. He said, yeah, he went to church, and he had an intimate conversation with Jesus and accepted Christ as his personal Savior. And the undertaker is sharing this with thousands of people, whoever, you know, he, he's got a lot of fans, and he shared it on this YouTube video, and he's not ashamed of Christ. Uh, next thing, and this is the last one, go to Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to read from verses 17 to 32. I don't know if it says this in your Bible, but a verse above verse 17 in my Bible, it says, let your life be your testimony. That's so important. Verse 17 says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Don't be the same as everybody else. Stand out for God. Verse 18, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, Verse 20, but ye have not so learned Christ. 21, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Verse 22, again, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Again, putting on that new man, that new creature. You've accepted Christ. You're getting rid of your old ways. You put on the new ways, verse 24, again, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, 
And look, here's the things you got to get out of your life so that you can have that testimony for your family and friends. Wherefore, put away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I know that sounds, I gave a lot of words there, a lot of verses, but basically it's saying, listen, your family needs to see your testimony. They need to see all these sins are out. If, if they knew you as somebody that used to swear or lie or steal, whatever sin you struggled with, and now they see a new person, they don't see you struggling with those things anymore. They don't hear you cursing anymore. They don't see these sins that were evident in your life when you were younger and you're older. They said, what's different? Oh, it's Jesus. Christ, it's a relationship with him that has changed me. Will you please come with me to church or can I tell you about Jesus right now? Listen, sometimes they're going to say no. Again, like remember what the undertaker said? He said no a few times and then eventually he's like, okay, I'll come. And just one visit, one visit to the church changed his life forever. That could be true for you and your family and your friends. And it may not be true. They may say no and never come to church. But God tells us in his word, we need to be faithful and share with them anyway. And they may say no for five years and then they come visit. I don't know. But you need to pray for them. You need to have that testimony in your life. Whether they say yes or no, your relationship with Jesus needs to grow stronger. And because you don't want your family or friends to go to hell, you need to continue to ask them and share the gospel and invite them to church. All right? We love you. God loves you even more. And aloha.